We had three different retirements this week, two from the sports world that could impact WWE, and all of which are going to end up being total bullshit. We start with Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski of the New England Patriots, one of Mojo Rawley's best friends, announced his retirement from football at the age of 29. Mojo called him the greatest to ever play the tight end position in the NFL. I will leave that for all of the NFL experts out there to debate. <laughs> that is not a that is not a debate I am equipped to have, but I would be curious if you guys would agree with that or not. Uh, certainly, he's got to be one of the best. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion, huge wrestling fan. He even got physical during the Andre Battle Royal a couple of years ago in Orlando. Jinder Mahal splashed a drink in his face. He hopped the barricade and some somebody forgot to clue in one of the security guards. She rushes over. She shoves Gronkowski back. Gronkowski, if you go back and watch it, he's basically looking at this woman like, what the fuck are you doing? And she was not letting him go anywhere near the ring until finally the referees come over. They're trying to smarten this woman up like, nah, uh, he's part of the show here. And then it was okay to let him go. But uh, he got in the ring and he tackled down Jinder Mahal and he helped Mojo win the Battle Royal. And what a big win for Mojo it was. It, boy, it turned his career around, didn't it? Now Mojo talks to himself in the mirror. He's the happiest guy in the world right now that Gronkowski retired, right? You gotta, you gotta think that Mojo, nobody was happier than Mojo to find out that Gronkowski had retired. Please, please come to WWE. I need you. They have me talking to a mirror every week. Now, there's no word on what Gronkowski plans to do other than just party it up and, and live life. He'll be loving life like Michelle McCool when she first debuted. Now, just last month, Triple H said that the door is open for Gronkowski to come in, and if he wants to pursue a WWE career, they'll welcome him with open arms. Already his agent is talking, well, you know, in a year, maybe he'll come back and he'll play football. Already he's, he's, he's sort of thinking to the future, like, yeah, this retirement may not be entirely on the up and up. But Gronkowski's been plagued by back problems uh, over the years, going back to his college days. He had surgery in college. Uh, anything other, if he was serious about this, anything other than a limited part-time deal, like a Brock Lesnar-type deal, I think people are just kidding themselves about him signing a contract with WWE. I think that they need to temper those expectations. But Leo Rush, he name-dropped Gronkowski on Monday night. They were in Boston. He was cutting a promo on Finn Balor. And he said, you're going to be forced to leave like a beaten, broken, hot piece of garbage like Rob Gron Gronkowski. That sounds like the setup to me for a spot at WrestleMania where Finn is probably having to fight off Finn or uh, Leo, rather, on the outside. It's two against one. He's going to get screwed again. And Gronkowski makes kind of the save for him like he did in Orlando. Comes in to save the day, takes out Leo Rush, helps Finn Balor win back the Intercontinental title. Not unlike the late Walter Payton giving Razor Ramon the assist to win back the IC title at SummerSlam back in 94. In fact, unless they announce the Demon this week on television, I know that you can see the, the Demon persona is in some of the uh, advertising for WrestleMania this year. We might get a sense this week if we're going to see the Demon character, but if not, I mean, look, I think the Demon outdoors in daylight is kind of a waste it was very weird to see The Undertaker come out in the daylight hours, WrestleMania 31, that one year. Uh, I, well, I guess he did. Well, I wonder, actually, that Wembley Stadium show, SummerSlam in 92, when he came out for the match with Kamala. Was it still daylight outside? I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure it was nighttime by that point in the, in the night. But anyway, I don't know. The, the demon outdoors in the daylight, and he needs outside help from Rob Gronkowski. If, if there was going to be an assist from somebody like that, I think it would be a waste of the demon persona. If that's the plan, I would say better to hold it off for another big show like uh, SummerSlam. You could bring out the demon then. But do I expect that Gronkowski is done playing football? Not a chance. So that's bullshit retirement number one. Bullshit retirement number two goes to Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor also announced his retirement this week from... Mixed martial arts. That's a great way, by the way, to deflect from the rape accusation that just so happened to go public later that same day. Uh, the accusation, it dates back to an incident that happened in December. 
Uh, he was arrested in Ireland in January. That's where it happened. Uh, so allegedly it happened. But very quietly, he was arrested. Nobody knew. The laws over there are very different. They're a lot stricter than they are here in this country when it comes to not exposing the identity of somebody in a case like this unless it's been proven that they've committed the crime. Uh, here, everything leaks and everybody knows everything. In Ireland, apparently, they really... It's illegal to uh, reveal someone's identity in that situation so he was arrested and questioned and then i guess he wasn't charged he was released nobody knew uh although the investigation continued uh and you know look maybe it has no merit maybe it's somebody looking for a, a quick payday it is said to be a credible accusation maybe they just find that there's not enough evidence to charge him and this goes away but boy is that an awfully convenient way by retiring out of nowhere to get ahead of some really bad press. At 1 o'clock in the morning, by the way, Eastern Time, a random tweet, I am now retired. <laughs> Just like that, out of nowhere. You don't think he knew this was coming down? The same day that this story breaks? Later that same day? Come on. Don't be naive. He's another one whose name has been floated as a WWE possibility. The last time he tweeted out his retirement was three years ago. And he was back fighting, I think, what, a few months later? So I would be skeptical anyway about this. But with this news, I mean, WWE is not going to touch this guy with a 10-foot pole. The mere stench of an accusation against Enzo, and he was gone. Now, I, I get the sense they didn't like him anyway, and they were just looking for a reason to get rid of him. But still, the mere stench of an accusation similar to this against Enzo Amore, and that was it. His career was over. But will he ever fight again? Of course he'll fight again. Is he retired? No, he's not retired. And yes, I, in fact, I would expect him to fight within the year. So that's bullshit retirement number two. Which brings us to bullshit retirement number three. Nikki Bella, on the heels of her sister Brie announcing her own retirement on an episode recently of Total divas or bellas or bullshit or whatever the name of the show is she already announced her retirement a few weeks ago nikki followed suit on the season finale of the show how convenient the big bombshell that they saved for the season finale she said she made the decision after the evolution pay-per-view last year while she was on a european tour she realized that she doesn't want to put her body or her surgically repaired neck through the travel and trauma and stress of being a WWE superstar. She feels she's too old for that kind of travel. Why am I doing this? I'm ready to hang up the jersey, she said. And as quickly as that news broke across all of these different wrestling websites, TMZ caught up with her, and already she's saying that she would definitely be open to a return to the ring. <laughs> Provided, of course, that the timing is right. Wrestling retirements, wrestling retirements are like a streak of good episodes of Raw, right? They don't last very long. Nikki Bella is no different. And maybe it was just these websites getting ahead of themselves. Maybe it was more a case of her saying, I'm retiring from full-time competition. That's also very possible. But I love how the stories were that Nikki Bella retires. Nikki Bella announces her retirement, and now she's on TMZ saying, oh, I'd love to come back and talk about a return to the ring here and there. It's a hell of a retirement. Think of uh, the uh, the movie The Princess Bride, where you know he's he's using that word. He goes that word. Don't think it means what you think it means. So Nikki, look, I think that it was a nice little gimmick for the finale of their reality show. Uh, is she retired? Obviously, the answer is no. And and look, Nikki broke her neck doing something that she was not very good at when she first started. She improved. She got better. I can't say the same for Brie. She tried. I don't doubt that she worked hard, but she wasn't very good. And when the next wave of, of female talent came up from NXT, the Charlottes and the Sashas and the Oscars and the Ember Moons, the Bellas, I think Brie more so than Nikki, look like a relic from an age when the women were marketed mostly just as eye candy. 
And I know that isn't what they wanted. They say, well, you know, we argued and we fought for longer time in our matches. And, you know, it wasn't, it, look, it wasn't their decision to get 30 seconds to go out on Raw. Half of which was used for their entrance. So they found success with their reality shows. And they just started their own podcast this week. But don't think for a second that Nikki Bella or Brie have wrestled their final match. I fully expect them to be challenging for those women's tag team titles inside of two years, if that. Brie wants to have another baby? Okay, fine, have another baby. And after she does, believe me, it won't be long. We're going to be treated to the big Bella comeback. And the eventual Hall of Fame induction, which you know is coming. And you know, for all the people, I have to actually defend Nikki on this, for all the people who crap on Nikki Bella, oh, she's a terrible wrestler and this and that, before you start throwing the word terrible around, just remember, Rosa Mendez worked for that company for 11 years, the same amount of time that Kofi Kingston has been with WWE. So too was Rosa Mendez. Remember that rumor a while back that Rosa Mendez, because I think she had a kid, she was planning on making a comeback. Well, she gave an interview to the website 411mania.com this week and said that for all of her years in WWE, they would not let her in the ring as much as she wanted to be in the ring. Gee, I wonder why. But they just they would not let her in the ring as much as she really wanted to be, and she never got a run with the title. <laughs> And that's why she was planning on making a comeback. She wanted to have one more run for one more year and have a title <laughs> a title <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. And you thought you were angry about Asuka losing her title. Imagine if she had lost it to, to Rosa Mendez. I mean, dude. Uh, can you imagine? They would do something like that, too. Have Asuka get rolled up on a distraction. Rosa Mendez pins her to win the women's championship. Rosa Mendez makes Nikki Bella look like Luthez. But she was going to come back to have a run with the title. Yeah, if she stole it and strapped it around her waist for her morning jog, she could have a run with it. That's the only run with the title that she's ever going to have. 